Hello and welcome to the LARP Book Podcast. This is a four-part series in which we talk to Tintin about how she went about creating a LARP and how you can do exactly the same thing. So sit back and enjoy. And all of the details can be found over at LARPbook.com. Okay then, we're back with Tintin talking about writing a LARP. Um, and uh, in this sort of section, we're going to have a look at, at, at how to actually get together and uh, actually writing the LARP document. You know, the real the real meat of, uh, of, of how this process works. So, so Tintin, explain to you how you actually sort of uh, went about writing that actual document? Well, I started out by setting down the vision, which, as I uh, explained previously, was based on, do, on making harsh, harsh decisions and feeling powerless due to the circumstances of World War I, killing everyone, or, well, killing all the young, um, all the young men going off, one yeah. of which we were waiting for. So I first set that one down, and then I started thinking, how do I want the play, how do I want to make the players feel this thing. Okay. So I basically sat down and looked at several other LARPs, uh, black box LARPs too, which had similar themes. And one that really stood out to me was one uh, called Live at Joachim, which is a Swedish black box LARP about a group of people who are at a party where one person is absent. Okay. So this LARP, so the LARP pretty much started up as some sort of a ripoff of that LARP, but I think I managed to change enough things to make it very different. I ended up only stealing two meta techniques from it. Actually, no, only one, uh, which was a meta technique called the toast. And meta techniques are very important because the meta techniques are what you use when you're writing a Romanesque or, um, how do I say, Nordic LARP in order to make, to strengthen the evolvement in the character stories. And the meta technique I stole, um, stole was, or, well, borrowed basically, borrowed, was yes. called a toast, uh, which meant that you take a glass and you say, I would like to propose a toast. And then you talk about a memory that you had with George, who was the person we were waiting for. And at the end of the memory, you say, to Pi or to England or something like that. And the characters in the LARP do not hear the memory. They only hear, I'd like to propose a toast to Pi. Okay, right. The original way it was used in Live at Yu Joachim was that it was used to, well, tell a memory and let the characters explain what they really felt towards Yu Joachim who was absent. But in my LARP, I structured it up so that it was part of the act structure, which is also another important rubric. Uh, basically, in the first act, everyone had to raise one toast each, and they had to tell a sad memory. And in the second act, they had to tell an indifferent memory. And in the third act, they had to tell a happy memory. This corresponded to the act structure, which was basically what how I wanted the LARP to affect the mood of the players and also how I wanted the plot to go. Yeah. So I started out with an introductory LARP entry section called The Wait, which where the characters were all met. Everything was meant to be a little awkward at first before they realized that, oh shit, I know you. Second LARP was called The Wonder, which was based around the idea that a telegram arrived, which made it, which pulled everything into disarray because nobody really knew what was going on and tried to figure out what was going on. And the third was called The Resolution, and it was basically the, the, revelation, revelation, the conclusion and the epilogue. And at that point, they got a telegram and a letter which explained everything, and all we had to do was put the pieces together and uh, try and get to the point where we basically realized it all. Okay, yeah. After that, I went over the rules and safety, which are some of the most important things in a LARP document. Now, we all knew each other, so I didn't feel it was too important. But because there were some uh, newbie LARPers and there are some things you should always lay down, for example, cut and break, yeah, yeah. Um, the way we used it was that cut basically meant cut this entire scene we don't want, you know, let's talk about what uh, is making us feel that we do not want to continue with this scene. Okay. And the way we used to break was, I was fine with lopping this thing up until this certain point. We uh, Please call, cool down a little, but continue lopping. I'm still having fun. 
Okay, right. So, so, um, so the, the term cut is 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. Right, stop now because this is making me incredibly uncomfortable, um, and and I don't want to continue on with this lap until we sorted this out. Uh, and break then was okay. Could we just tone it down a little bit? But I still want to carry on. Um, let's let but let's not get it as heated as it is. Exactly. Okay. Right. No problem. And um, and we also had the workshops which is probably the last rubric I'm going to talk about in this section, but still a very important part of LARPing. Yeah. Because the workshops are what you use, are basically what makes people comfortable with LARPing, especially those who haven't worked on LARP before. So yeah. Yeah. the first thing we did was just practice the meta te- explain the meta techniques and practice it. And we spoke a little bit about what kind of LARP this was, how we were going to LARP it. And we practiced social gaming, which basically meant that we practiced, did uh, we did some workshops that practiced not running around with swords and going rah, rah, but instead talking about how we feel about the situation, how it's affecting us and just being natural, as natural as we can. Yeah. And I also wrote down a short briefing over the time period and over the state of war. And we built, and then we built the character we were waiting for by everyone gets to suggest some facts and discuss the character. So we all have the same picture of him. And the very last thing we did, because I've read that the best thing you can do for a LARP to make people get into character is give them validation as that character. Okay. So we had this point where I took two characters, which I knew had a relationship together. I took them off in another room and said, okay, I want to see the scene where you two broke. Okay, I'm going to go away for a little bit. And when I come back, I want to see the scene where you two broke up, or you can just tell me about it. Uh, And I go away and they have time to talk about the relationship and forge a scene, which is very character defining and which really helped get people into character and come back and they're practically in character already. All of this then has has been written down into a document. Did you stylize this document so it would be easy to put out there for other people to use? Um, Or is this just purely as a one-off for yourself? Well, it's purely a one-off for myself, although it could be... uh, I could probably edit it and edit it to something else in order to in order for it to be commonly played. However, it rests very much on non-transparency and it also concerns several characters who are created for another LARP. So I'd have to rewrite those two. 